Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and it is April the 25th, and we're ready for Lesson 115 in A Course in Miracles Workbook for Students. 115 is a review lesson, 99 and 100. Salvation is my only function here, and my part is essential to God's plan for salvation. Okay, yesterday was uh, Lesson 4 and 14. Our two lessons were I am spirit and I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. Okay, so these are short enough that it's probably good to, to read that, but did you get some, did you get any sense of using this in your day? Did anything come to you that was helpful? Something came to me that was real helpful, and I'd like to share it with you. But let's just read this. I am spirit. I am the son of God. No body can contain my spirit nor impose on me a limitation God created not. Okay, so no body can contain my spirit. So, but I am spirit. But a body can't contain my spirit. Well, that must mean I'm not a body. All right. Now that's that's a given in that. Well, if I'm not a body and it says here, I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation, then my part must not be the body that is my part. Uh, my part must be the spirit part in salvation. And I I'll, I'll explain a little better. Let me read this. I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. What can my function be but to accept the word of God? What can my function be but to accept the word of God? Okay, this is a spirit function. Your spirit, you're not a body. So you don't have to accept it for the body. That's not necessary, maybe not even possible. What can my function be but to accept the word of God who has created me for what I am and will forever be? So our spirit, I'm spirit, and now I'm to accept what I am and what I'll forever be. And as I started, how, how does that apply to the, you know, the events of the day? I started realizing that everything is an energetic exchange. It's a spiritual um, encounter. We may be using our body to do certain things, but it's a spirit, and it's the spirit that's the action, that's the uh, that's the real the real work. That's our identity, and that we're to in, from a spirit not from a body level, say, I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. Wow, it just, it, 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 it let me see things from a different perspective, from a non-body perspective, that I have a job to do, accept my part in God's plan for salvation as a spirit. And wow, I started seeing all kinds of opportunities to help and assist and do things for people that was just my thoughts. And I realized, well, this is the best thing we can be doing anyway. Changing the world, one thought at a time. Uh, okay, so that was yesterday's lesson. I hope that uh, you, you, you got a lot out of it. Um, I've got a Mac Black Raspberry here. That's what this one is, a Mac Black Raspberry. This is kind of young. Uh, there are some little thorns, not very sharp. The leaves don't have much of a thorn. But this is a black raspberry. I didn't, I didn't even know there was such thing as a black raspberry. It says it's a late-bearing uh, black raspberry and that it makes a, a really tasty smaller, no, no, larger berry. Um, anyway, I haven't ever seen a black raspberry, so this will be my little 
It's called a Mac Black. <laughs> it says on the little sticker someone wrote on her, Mac Black Black Raspberry. <laughs> I, I imagine it's just called a Mac Black Raspberry. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to learn about Mac Black Raspberries. Hey, but something to keep in mind on your raspberries, you want to keep them... Everybody, I, everybody says the same thing. I haven't found out exactly why, but it says pests can transfer between a blackberry and a raspberry. I shouldn't have them this close together, I guess. Hadn't thought about that till just now, but this is just temporary just for today. Um, but anyway, you want to keep them 100 feet apart. Kind of kind of the same thing when, when we build a house. We want to keep uh, our septic tank about a hundred feet from our well <laughs> down down line too in my opinion okay um i have a lot of opinions about about turning water back to the land gracefully and not making any pollution of the groundwater and having it be used in a um, a safe, sustainable way, and then to go back to the earth in a likewise um, graceful way that doesn't pollute anything. And I think we're going to be learning a lot in the next few years on how we can do that. Okay, I, I want to take a minute before we read our lesson, and I, I've been wanting to read the introduction. So at the, at the introduction to the text, I want it's just, uh, yeah, depending on how you look at it, a couple main paragraphs. Really, it's not very, not very big, but go to it if you'd like. But this starts off with, this is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Hmm. This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Required. Who's requiring it? Only the time you take it is voluntary. Hmm. It's a required course, but only time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you may elect what you want to take at a given time. Okay, so this required curriculum, we get to take what we want to take at a given time. But it is required. Paragraph two, the course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love. Okay, it doesn't aim at teaching the meaning of love. Why? For that is far beyond what can be taught. For that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. Okay, it wants to remove the blocks to our, uh, our natural inheritance, which is love. Um, it wants to remove the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Okay, he, he says the opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened, and nothing unreal exists. There are no opposites. <laughs> if it's opposite truth, well, then it doesn't exist. And nothing that is true or is real, as he's saying here, can hurt, can hurt anything because it's totally integrated. Everything is part of the one, God. So nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So as we, as we let peace be our guide, and you know, that's what, hopefully that's what brought you to this study, is that you just decided that you could be more peaceful. That this is the curriculum. That we're miracle workers. That we, you know, for whatever reason you've come here, let it be known that your uh, reward, your um, your learning, your um, 
your, your, your mark that you're moving towards is that of complete peace. All right? And we're going to get there by recognizing that nothing real can be threatened. We can feel invulnerable. We can feel, we can, we, we can know that everything is fine because we're part of the one. And that's what's true. That's what's real. Nothing unreal exists. You know, if it's not true, well, then it's an illusion. It doesn't exist. That doesn't mean you don't still believe it. And because you believe it, you lost your peace. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. You know, I've always thought that the master put that introduction so that those that understood that wouldn't have to read the book. But for the rest of us, we just read that and realize, well, that's where we're headed. That's the introduction. And that's what we're going to be learning through all these pages of theory, and which is the text, and practice, which is the workbook. And I suppose the manual for teachers falls somewhere in between, maybe. Okay, now for our lesson for today. For morning and evening review. Lesson 99. Salvation is my only function here. That's the review. We're in lesson 115, but it's a review of lesson 99 and 100. Salvation is my only function here. My function here is to forgive the world for all the errors I have made. What? My function here is to forgive the world for all the errors that I have made. For thus am I released from them with all the world. So when we forgive someone, we're really forgiving ourselves for the judgment that we made on them. You know, it doesn't matter what they did. If we've held a condemnation, a grievance, a separation, uh, a judgment of some sort that holds them as, as, as wrong and separate, and, and well, then we're going to forgive ourselves for having that opinion of them. Because they're our brother and our sister and they're, they're one with God. They're our source and we have to see them that way. And when we see them that way truly, they'll truly be that way. <laughs> we have much power. And lesson 100, my part is essential to God's plan for salvation. Mm, you're very important. My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. I'm essential to the plan of God. For the salvation of the world, I am essential to the, to the plan of God for the salvation of the world. For he gave me his plan that I might save the world. Okay? Remember, we've made the world what it is, and we can change the world by changing our thoughts. So this is our function to save the world. I am essential to this because I've got to change it. I've got to do it. I've got to change me and the whole world changes. Remember, we change what's inside. What outside is a reflection of what's inside. It's a pictorial representation of your own thoughts. And to change the world, don't change it. Just change your thoughts about the world and the whole world changes. I am essential. Let's see. My part is essential to God's plan for salvation. I am essential to the plan of God for the salvation of the world. For he gave me his plan that I might save the world. On the hour, that's very loving too. On the hour, salvation is my only function here. And on the half hour, my part is essential to God's plan for salvation. Peace.